So Adam, I, I, this time I bought the data in using, um, when I import the data, you have various options. The first time I tried it, I used the unknown method. This time I've used um, the grid scaled in the project coordinate system just to see if that makes any difference. And I don't think it's gonna make any difference, but anyway, we'll try it and see. Um, if I go to the tool shed menu, I just run it raw and I've just got a point cloud processor and I'm not going to do any, um, oh, one second, let me just uh, reset my login here. Okay, so what I do is I pick the point cloud and then I specify the grid size. So I'm gonna do five, uh, minimum grid of five and elevation range of 10,000 or 1,000 or something like that. This is because I'm gonna be stripping out the undergrowth. So I need a high elevation range tolerance because the trees are so 50, 60 feet high probably or whatever. So I just put in a large number here. It doesn't really matter what number you put in here. Then the minimum grid size, this is just because I tried this over the weekend and I found that five was a good result. And then I'm gonna pick lowest here because I wanna find the ground. And in here, you can decide whether you want to fit planes. I'm not going to bother. Um, you don't need to do that for this type of work. Um, you, if you're doing dirt survey and you've got a lot of slopes on the site, you probably want to hit the fit planes option because that will reduce the data on side slopes uh, for you. But in this case, you know, it's a, uh, just a raw terrain. So I'm just going to leave it um, to pick, pick the points out. And because I'm picking a grid size, it's always going to do the grid size no matter what anyway. And then name prefix, I'm just going to call it AS1 and then dash, I normally put in here like dash 5, dash 5, dash 1000, dash L, dash N, like this, just so I know what I used as a processing, um, just so you know. And then down here you can choose this, and this is what I was saying to you on the phone, is we don't have any inclusion or exclusion boundaries. I want to include, a, create a surface here, and this number here is coming from support and options and under um, point clouds this number right here should be set to whatever you want so if I put in like this 3 million and then say okay to that then this number should reflect that there is a defect in this we've put in a request to change it so I'm hoping I'll get a fix for that today and then we'll be updating this version because the lowest isn't working in your version either so if you pick mean right now or lowest, it won't make any difference, but in the new version that we'll publish, hopefully today, we'll fix it. And then maximum points in surface, 500,000. Uh, I'm gonna change that here to three million as well. One, two, three, one, two, three. And um, this number down here, it's telling you roughly what it thinks, but this is at like 80, 90% reduction, and we're typically seeing 95 to 98% reduction, so you're gonna be significantly less than what it tells you here. So this is a security blanket kind of thing here that I would go with um, and just put in something bigger than the number that it's recommending you here at the highest level. So if you put in two million, that would cover it. And provided you got a computer that can cope with it, you'd be fine. And then hit, you hit apply. And then you should see it start to process the data down here. And provided it does that, I'm just gonna pause while it's doing it. It just takes you know a minute or so to do it for this data set. Um, and at the end of it, we should have a, um, a surface that's half decent. There will still be some spikes in it because the tree canopy in some areas is quite dense and so consequently there are no ground points underneath the canopy in those areas. Um, but with a five foot grid it does minimize the amount of canopy that's left behind afterwards. Um, and that's something you should be aware of. Now if it's not processing for any reason. So now it's finished processing. Um, now we've got a surface model. So if I actually take a look at this, what happened here is it created me a scan uh, for that data. So if I turn off your scan and turn off um, these two regions and turn off all surfaces from it, the scan that it created for me, I'll put this on a black background maybe, you can maybe see it a bit better if I make the point cloud larger. So here's the scan that it created on that surface. And if we look at that in 3D, you see that Pretty much most of the data has been cleaned out, but there's still some spikiness in the data there. Um, and when you look at the surface model, there will be some spikes in it as well. And you can see those spikes pretty clearly as the points that need fixing. So what I do at that point is if I hadn't done this before, then what I would do here is I would go to um, close out of here 
and what I would do now is I would just say go to the point clouds and say create a region or let's say add a region let's uh, just go grab this data here so I'm going to grab that point right there and say I want to create a region and call it junk for now and once you've done that you can now say I want to add to region and you can pick junk from here and now you can just pick data using the polygon select method so in the 3d view I'm just going to turn this view so I can see kind of what I'm doing I'm just going to show you kind of how I go about trying to tackle this kind of work and if you turn junk off and as you get rid of the data here that you're working with you can see it's going to disappear here. Oh, that's the actual georeference point. So you can just rotate the drawing a little bit more and then do it again. And go up here, just grab these couple of points here. And you just keep turning it until you don't have any data left that's causing that kind of issue. There's a few points right there. So I'm just going to go up here, grab these. And just as you rotate the drawing, you can see that you're getting rid of the spikiness of the data there. And if there's anything else, there's a couple of points up there. And if you tip it up like that, then you can basically squeeze through here. So just go through that like that and then just I think I've got most of it there and then what I would do is turn on the junk layer or the junk um, uh, filter there grab one of the points on that and then go to surface members and say remove it from this surface and that will remove the spikes from the data hopefully so I turn on that surface now you can see that your surface model is much cleaner now if I turn off the junk point cloud you can see I've got a pretty nice clean surface there if I turn off the point clouds altogether that gives you your data and now you've got you know you've got a little bit of undulation and there's the odd little bit of a spike here or there but those are things you can decide how you want to clean those out if you want to and then down here in the ravine there's a couple of bits there that might be there so depending on what what uh, grid interval you pick in the starting point will dictate kind of the density of your surface and how closely it resembles the the ground through there and then the spikiness then you can change if you've got these like little areas here then you might want to just change the edge length to 50 or 25 or something like that and that will just heal up those little areas right there and if you've got any more spikes around the edges here you can go in and get rid of those as you need to but that's kind of how I process the data so I'm just going to run it one more time with that Georgia uh, coordinate system that you just told me about so I'm going to try it one more time and see if that works um, and if it does then I think it's a just an installation issue on your side now when you install, what I'd recommend is install, um, download, close all instances of TBC, download and install our package clean. And once you've done that, um, leave, um, before you do the installation, you want to leave the TBC, once it's been closed, leave it for about 30 seconds before you um, install the stuff, because TBC can hold on to some commands. And I'm wondering whether that's what happened is when you close TBC to do your installation, maybe it didn't clean the install everything and then keep an eye out today for an update using TML status for the um, the update to this uh, point cloud processor because that should be be fixed today and uh, I'll get you the the lowest version you know the lowest uh, method and highest method will be included in that uh, release today so hopefully you'll be able to work with this tonight okay all right we'll see you bye